Hey guys, welcome to Ferrigno Freedom Channel. I'm Dante Ferrigno. I'm back to talk to you about another video today, something that I was taking a glance at this morning and I said, you know what, I need to wait and watch this with my group because you guys have really shown me that covering these videos with you has been a, has been a real blessing. Man, I'm going to tell you first though, I got so sick this past weekend. I made the worst mistake I have done, especially after knowing that I've been eating at a restaurant for the past six months that's been using vegetable oil on the grill. And it has definitely done a number on me. It has done a number on my body and it's done a number on my face. You can see my rosacea's back. And uh, boy, getting off track on this diet really has showed me something that's been worth learning. It's been good to actually go through it because there are times when I, I couldn't even remember what it was like, what I was going through in the past. And what I ate is going to surprise some of you to being a big problem because many of you are carnivores that do BBBE and uh, don't worry about eating ruminant meats only like I do. But I've been eating ruminant meats for over two years up until I started working at this place. And occasionally I would have a little bit of bacon or maybe a little bit of sausage. But I never did what I did the other day. I got home from work and I hadn't had anything to eat all day. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and make a steak. I probably should have just went ahead and made two, but I can't remember why I didn't. I don't know if I didn't have another one at the time because I did have to go to the store this weekend. But anyway, the point is I only made one steak and I normally need two when I'm hungry. And that'll knock it out for the rest of the day if I'm doing one meal a day, which is a lot of what I do lately because I'm trying to get trimmed back down from all the damage I've done eating at a restaurant. I had a bunch of bacon that my wife had and it was applewood smoked bacon. The reason why it's dumb is I know applewood smoked bacon has a high sugar content compared to even most other bacons. Most bacon has some sugar in it. Some bacons have uh, brown sugar in it too and some other flavoring. It could even have molasses in some cases. But I knew I shouldn't, but I didn't have another steak ready to go. I either didn't want to make it or I didn't have one. I can't remember, like I said. I decided to eat some of the bacon and I wound up having seven pieces thick piece, thick cut bacon, seven pieces of it. And I knew within 10 minutes that that was a bad idea because my stomach started hurting. Like you don't know something that I haven't felt in a long time. I was like, Oh boy, it's going to be rough getting through the night tonight. And all through the night I was, Oh, by the way, if you hear anybody talking in the background, I've had construction workers here all weekend doing who knows what to my kitchen. It's a disaster in there, but they're supposed to be getting the countertops finished up right. So anyway, it was, it was rough getting through the night that night. And, uh, the next day I woke up, I felt like I had been hit by a train. I mean, everything in my body ached from head to toe. I was just in pain. And I said, my goodness, this reminds me a little bit of the way I used to feel before I started doing lion diet, it progressed. It, 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 I tried to rest all morning. I had to be at work at three o'clock that afternoon. And I thought, man, I, I feel like I have flu symptoms, even though I'm pretty sure I don't have flu because I didn't have any fever. I, had, I didn't have some of the other <laughs> symptoms of flu that I won't mention because they can be gross. I knew it was from what I had eaten. And uh, I thought about calling into work because I felt that bad. But I pushed through. I mean, it was a constant struggle to put on a happy face and do what I had to do all day long. And by the end of the night, I was just dying. I felt like, oh my God, when I get home, I don't even want to take my clothes off. I just want to lay in the bed and go back to sleep. And I laid in bed and I wound up getting through the night. I woke up multiple times having to go to the bathroom, but that's not uncommon for me. But it was uncommon that I felt so like I didn't want to even get up for those times because I just wanted to lay there. I felt so bad. The next day I woke up still feeling pretty bad. And what I had done that morning and the next morning, the morning that I'm just arriving at, is I had to sit in a bathtub for like 30 minutes or more because that's what I used to do 
before I did Lion Diet when I would have these gut pains that I was feeling recently after having eaten that bacon. And that was the only way that I could get any relief. And then I wound up going to the bathroom. And as soon as I got what was left of that bacon out, it was like a fog lifted. And it was like, oh my goodness, that is so much better. I went to work that day and felt much better throughout the day. Although toward the end, I started to have some pains in my lower abdominal area. Usually it's a little bit up, up, up around my belly button, but this is down closer to just above my pubic bone. And it just feels like it's moving through my system still. Like there's some residual that's going through there that is just wreaking havoc everywhere it goes. And on top of that, I have talked about how back when I, before I started doing lion diet, I used to have real anger problems and I was able to bring those anger issues under control. Apparently food makes a huge difference when it comes to anger related issues and other things where you want to have self-control or self-discipline because it just, uh, it causes me, maybe it's because, you know, 47 years before I started doing lion diet, 47 years of doing the standard American diet and damaging my body over all that time made my gut much more susceptible to these things because I see people all the time who can eat all kinds of garbage and they have a great body and everything's fine. Although eventually it usually catches up with them. I certainly didn't do myself any favors not finding this diet earlier, but I can't change what's happened. I'm just thankful that I found it now. And I'm also thankful, like I said, for the fact that I've been able to go through this because it has been truly reinvigorating to my spirit to remind you guys of if you're feeling this way, if you're having skin problems, if you're having gut problems, if you're having anxiety that you know you can overcome, like mentally, you feel like or you believe that this is not the problem that you're you're inner voice is trying to make it into, but you can't beat that back. Diet seems to play a huge role and lion diet could be the solution. And, you know, I've, I've told many people that maybe you can just do carnivore and you'll do just fine. Maybe you could do a whole foods diet and you'll do better. As long as you're cutting out processed foods, it's going to make a huge difference. But that includes things like sugar. Uh, that includes things like flour and all other refined things, things that are changed from their natural state. Those are the things that you definitely want to avoid still. I don't, I don't change any of that. But I will re restate that if you're having problems similar to what I was having or problems similar to what Jordan Peterson had mentioned previously that he was having with chronic depression, bleeding gums, numb spots on his skin, his daughter's uh, rheumatoid arthritis, auto uh, autoimmune disorders, things like that. Lion diet may be your solution because it has worked miracles for, from what I can tell, thousands of people now. Anyway, I do want to still address the issue of anger. In this video, we're going to watch today called How to Stay Calm in Every Situation with Dr. Adia and Dr. Huberman. I started to watch this video already and I realized very shortly into it that this is something that we need to watch together. So let her roll. One of the one of the hallmarks of my existence has always been, you know, just a, uh, a an insane amount of anger and rage. It, it's, it's been there as long as I've known. So I don't have a conscious memory of not having rage. Right. So earliest memories of life when I'm five years old, I have rage like you can't believe. And it's it's a problem all my life. So as a teenager, if I go more than two weeks without punching a hole in the wall of our house, it's a miracle. I mean, I am so good at drywall. You can't believe how good I am for all the stuff I have to repair around our house. Like I'm breaking windows, I'm breaking, it just doesn't, like I just, and so and in a way, and, and, and of course I rationalized how much boxing saved my life because I had this amazing outlet for my rage, right? If you, I got to basically exercise six hours a day. I'm hitting punching bags in people all day long. And it's just a beautiful outlet that keeps me out of jail. Um, and a big part of that rage was inward, right? So it's, it, it, it's not rocket science to understand that a person who has that much 
hatred for everyone as an enormous amount for themselves. And so one of the things I didn't realize was happening was what my inner monologue was, because as you can appreciate, your inner monologue is so frequent and ubiquitous and present that it's easy to almost forget that it's there. I mean, that's the, you know, that's the, that's the sort of uh, dangerous part about it, right? Is kind of the, you know, the David Foster Wallace, this is water thing. The fish are swimming through water. It, the water's everywhere. They don't even realize they're in water. You don't unrealize, you don't realize the subconscious stream of thoughts that constantly flow. But eventually I became aware of just what that self-talk was. And it is, it was no longer the case. It was the angriest, the most violent self-talk you can imagine. I mean, it was like, there is no mistake that I could make that was anything other than my perfect, perfect standard that didn't result in what I would call my inner Bobby Knight going ballistic. So it just didn't matter. Like it, 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 it sounds silly, Andrew. It didn't matter. If I didn't perfectly cook a steak, if I didn't perfectly nail something I was doing, if, if, if I didn't do anything that was perfect at what I described as match grade perfect, I mean, I would want to beat myself to a pulp and I would scream at myself. I mean, it just, it's, it's again, it's hard to describe. And I, I hope that most people listening to this don't understand what that feels like. Well, it became very clear that that had to change because when you are, when you are that, when you hate yourself that much, by definition, you are going to be an insufferable prick to everybody else. Like, cause you're, you're just, that's going to spill into how you interact with the world. So I, you know, was working with a therapist who was one of the people who was sending me to this place in Arizona. And basically it became clear that, you know, they, 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 they proposed. Let me pause right there for just a moment. I'll go back to where he starts segueing into the, the therapy part. Hmm. Man, oh man, I didn't, I don't think I had it quite that bad to where if I made a steak improperly, <laughs> at least it's hard to tell because I didn't make a lot of steaks back before I, I started eating this way. But I do remember always taking on a lot and being so hard on myself for not succeeding at what I was trying to do or not being the best at it or not winning or whatever it is. Uh, I just, I held myself to a standard that if anybody else was holding me to that standard, it would be tyrannical. And this reminds me of something Jordan Peterson has talked about in the past too. I know I've mentioned Jordan already earlier in this, this video, but, uh, He's a great influence. He, he's been a wonderful influence for me. And one of the things he's talked about is the notion of caring for yourself as if you're taking care of another person, as if you're a caregiver for yourself and not beating yourself up over the things that you wouldn't do to somebody you love if they did those things and to encourage and to promote the right things. Yes, I want to hold myself to a higher standard. Yes, I want to do things that are better in my life. I want to be a little bit better today than I was yesterday. And some days I go to bed and I don't feel like I did that. But one, food has made it easier for me to be okay with that. A lot easier. A lot easier. But there is something to be said for what he's talking about here because I don't know that food was causing my problem early, early on. It could be. As I've mentioned, I'm highly sensitive to things like seed oils and sugar that I had no idea that I was sensitive to these, to these things because they've been in my life for as long as I can remember. And even my younger stepson right now, he, he holds himself to a high standard. He recently got his black belt in karate and he's 12 years old just blows my mind that he's been able to, to reach such heights 
that I, I never got past yellow belt when I was doing karate. I was in gymnastics. I was in football. I was in everything, but I never succeeded at doing anything. So he has much to be proud of. But he beats himself over the head when he doesn't perform 100%. And I have tried to encourage him that I don't expect perfection. I just encourage you to be the best that you can be. And if the best that you can be is not living up to your current standard, get up and try again. Don't kick yourself for it. Don't want to hit yourself. I mean, those are the kind of things that I used to do when I was a kid. I remember like hitting my own head and punching myself, punching walls. I didn't get good at doing drywall, but I got good at putting posters in places where my parents wouldn't see the holes that I had put in the wall until something later on and we moved and they found them anyway. All I can say is, is I've noticed a huge difference with the food that I left behind and the food that I recently uh, reintroduced into my bloodstream and into my digestive system. As a matter of fact, I still to this moment have pain at the lower part of my gut area from having eaten that bacon the other day. And I am not, that's over with. That is over with. I will also add, and I know there's a lot of you out there who are believers like I am. The little thing comes to my mind. I don't know if this is the case, but it certainly seems to play a role in that the unclean foods mentioned in the Old Testament tend to cause me to have weight gain, bad skin, and attitude problems. You know, maybe there was something to be said for following uh, the Jewish dietary laws of, the, of ancient Israel because it kept people from getting out of control. Because I find that I have so much more control over my flesh. My spirit is able to be in control far more than my flesh when I'm eating the right things. That, that's just a thought. Anyway, let's continue with the video and see what else Dr. Adia has to say here. That... You know, they, 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 they proposed that I could shed this trait if I was willing to do a certain amount of work. And I was like, there's no chance. Like, I'm 47 years old. This is the only way I've ever interacted with myself. How in the world could this be undone? It would take another 40 years to undo this. And they're like, no, no, no. Here's this exercise you're going to do. So the exercise was every single time I did something where I would have that self-talk, I would have to immediately stop myself and pretend that it wasn't me that just did that, but it was one of my closest friends. And instead, I would audibly speak to that person, there was nobody else there, but speak to that person as though they are the one that made the mistake. And I, were to, I was to record that on my phone. So if I'm out there shooting my bow and arrow and I'm don't get a bullseye, instead of screaming at myself, I have to say, oh, imagine it's my buddy JR who just missed that shot. What would I say to him? Pick up the phone or you know, pull out the phone and say, of course, something different. And of course, what I would say in that situation was much kinder. I mean, infinitely kinder. It's like if I'm saying it to my closest friend, I'm going to say it in a very kind way. And I had to take uh, a copy of that audio and text it to my therapist. Oh, wow. Yeah. Talk about so can you imagine? I was all on board this practice until you mentioned that at which point, and I, and I trust my therapist uh, um, to a very deep level, but I thought, wow, that, that's a, that's a mountain. Well, this, you know, this poor person got a lot of text messages, a lot of, a lot of audio files, but here's the part that just blows my mind. It only took, I don't know. I, I can't remember exactly. I'd have to go back to look at my journals. It only took about four months to get rid of Bobby Knight. Like, you know, again, we, we had kind of a mental model for what this looked like, which was Bobby Knight was the chairman of the board. He sat in the boardroom and nobody else got to talk. And for those that don't know, Bobby Knight had a terrible temper. Yeah. Yeah. The worst. Right. This is the guy that was throwing chairs across the basketball court. Level 11. Yep. Out of 10. And, and all of a sudden, like we got to the point where Bobby Knight is not even in the boardroom anymore. In fact, I, as I say this today, like, I don't really remember what he sounded like. I mean, it's, it's amazing to me. And, and I've had some really 
amazing opportunities to bring him back. Like, <laughs> it's not like I'm making fewer mistakes, right? It's not like I'm better today than I was three years ago at all the things that I do. I'm not. I'm actually probably worse in many regards. Uh, but the difference is, you know, I can communicate with myself. I, I think I can say this. I think I can say lovingly, right? And and maybe not as lovingly as some people can. I, I still think I'm probably maybe just a little higher standard with myself than maybe I need to be at times. But, but I'm just not beating myself up like I used to. And I think by extension, I'm beating other people up a lot less. Well, I don't know the extent to which your internal narrative reflects the uh, narrative that others have about you. But first of all, I want to thank you for sharing um, what you just shared. I think as a practical step, it, it um, first of all, it's one I've never heard of before, um, but certainly represents this incredible phenomenon of, of neuroplasticity because four months sounds like a bit of time and yet you're, you were 47 years yeah, old. So that's 47 years of accumulated, um, just absolutely berating self-talk is what it sounds like. Um, so it's something that people can, can think about for their own, for their own purposes. Well, that was very interesting. I think the most interesting things right off the bat are that at least most interesting to me, because I, I pick up on weird stuff like this. Dr. Huberman, first of all, was said he was on board until he told him his therapist wanted him to share those thoughts with, with him. And then also the fact that uh, he didn't know how much the inner narrative affected what other people think of you. Because, well, at least he admits that he's never really been presented with this idea and he hasn't thought much about it. I, on the other hand, have, especially since changing my way of eating has had such a tremendous effect on my mentality and the way I used to beat myself up and I know it was projecting to other people. I realized because I'm trying to get everybody I was an administrator at a retirement home and I'm the leader of my family I'm trying to get everybody on on board to a to a goal in a lot of ways not only was I being a tyrant to myself I'm sure I was being a tyrant to them as well I don't even like to think back on it it's hard to describe but I guarantee you my wife would certainly agree because she's definitely happy <laughs> with the change since and uh she says it's like I, I have my husband back so again whatever happened happened after many years of taking in the wrong kind of foods it affecting my gut in my 40s and changing a lot but going to lion diet has changed everything and hearing that you can also use mental habits like he talked about i think that would be good for anybody who's having a hard time with it even after they've had uh, control issues because the one thing i can say that i've had my entire life is i have listened to things like scripture and where things in the bible that are trying to teach me self-control that are trying to teach me to have a calm spirit but i wasn't having that calm spirit anyway until i started lion diet until i was able to remove the internal pressure to make choices that weren't good for me. It's been truly a miracle. And I'm looking forward to getting back to normal. Hopefully this won't go on much longer <laughs> because I am back on full, making my own food 100% now and not letting anybody bring me something. I know that sounds unsustainable, but honestly, in the crazy world we live in, where every, every restaurant is using vegetable oils. And I, I hear people tell me all the time, oh, I tell them I have an allergy to it and they, they make sure to fix it. I guarantee you that's not the truth every time because I work in a restaurant and I know what they think. They don't make the correlation to things like Vegeline. They don't know what's in Vegeline. They just think it makes the grill greasier. They don't think about the ingredients that are in there. So you could tell them no canola oil, no sunflower oil, and no soybean oil. But they're not reading the label to find out if that has what you think it has in it. And that's exactly the ingredients of Vegeline. So that's the problem with eating out these days. I would like to be able to change that. I hope that one of, the, that one of my goals in my 
future in talking about this is going to be making a protocol for restaurants to take the various types of carnivores into account. Because obviously people who do well on bacon, butter, beef, and eggs, and other versions of carnivore where you can eat just about every other animal protein and even dairy out there, they need their own protocols. But somebody who's doing lion diet, who's as sensitive as I am to all of these foods, we need very strict protocols. And that's going to require training to make it possible for people to eat out with a lot less difficulty. I don't know how Jordan Peterson does it traveling around the country unless he literally has his own chef with him, which, you know, he's probably doing well enough. Maybe he can afford to do that. If I had the resources, I would certainly do it if I was traveling around the world. So I wouldn't fault him if he was. But it is, it is quite difficult to function in regular society with the current food situation. So, yeah, it's going to be a battle. But if you have these sensitivities, if you have these difficulties that I've talked about, everything from anger to gut pains to autoimmune disorders, it may be very well worth it for you to give it a look and give it a try. Anyway, that's all I've got for today, guys. Stick around. I'll have a quick message from one of my affiliates. And if you buy anything using my affiliate links, it certainly helps the channel. I also have Patreon, and I thank you to all of my patrons. I have a credit roll for them at the end of the video as well, so you guys can honor them and say thanks to them for the support they give that helps me to be able to come back and do this regularly, even though I still have to work a full-time job to pay the bills. What I'm doing here is helping my family, and it's helping thousands of people, and I couldn't be happier doing this than I am doing anything else. Encouraging you to live the best life you can. I'll see you next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?